Hi, Dr. Kevin Windish from Sparks Pediatric and Adolescent Medicine. Welcome to our video series. This particular video is really intended for both parents and providers. Um, as always, if you have questions, if we can be of assistance for you here in our office, give us a call at area code 775-359-7111. Please remember, we, we really can't treat you over the phone. We need to see you if you're having issues, but we're happy to get you in even on a same day basis if necessary. So today, what I want to talk about is a disorder known as hyperhidrosis. It, it's not one we see a lot in children uh, or even in adults, but we do see it from time to time. Hyperhidrosis is exceptionally sweaty palms and feet. Now everybody's palms and feet sweat and perspire but some people have more problems than others. And if you're one of these people, you know who you are. You don't just have sweaty palms. You have difficulty holding a pen. You have, leave smudge marks on your papers. You leave puddles on the floor when you walk. Your shoes have to be changed out every day and washed weekly. Um, your socks, can literally be wrung out on a daily basis. If you're one of these people, there's a lot of discomfort that comes with that. And a lot of suffering quietly and embarrassment I've found with the patients that have treated with this disorder. The good news is there are medications that can help and, and other things we can do that can help for this. Now exactly what happens to cause this, nobody understands. We know that a part of the autonomic nervous system, known as the sympathetic nervous system, goes into overdrive and overfires to the nerves that control perspiration in the hands and feet. But why one individual has this in a family and the rest of the family members don't, or why one family has this and one family doesn't, nobody really understands that. It's a bit of a mystery. But by using therapies that target this aspect of the sympathetic nervous system, we can, can often modulate some of the symptoms. So what are our options? Do you need to live with this? Well, we'll start with the most famous option because, at least in my experience, this is the one everybody knows about. But it's not necessarily the best option. And that's surgery. The neurosurgeons can actually sever the nerve rootlets where they come out of the spine that are responsible for innervating the palms and the soles of the feet. With regards to the sweat glands, without severing the nerves that provide sensation to the hands. And we call that uh, dorsal root rhizotomy. It does work, assuming the neurosurgeon manages to get enough of the nerves. It is dangerous. Most of the time it goes off without a hitch. But there is always a risk that the surgeon could sever too many rootlets. It is permanent. There is no going back. And if the surgeon cuts too many or cuts too deep, uh, there is no repair. The biggest problem that people have with this is it doesn't, it's not always sufficient. The surgeon didn't remove enough. And so you wind up with multiple procedures. It's also rather drastic in my book. I think anytime you're cutting a nerve and permanently destroying part of the spinal cord, one needs to consider alternative therapies first. But there are surgeons who can definitely help you with this. So what are some of the other therapies that, that, that we use? Well, the mainstay is medication, and there's a number of medicines that are available. There's something called sodium glycopyrrolate, or uh, Robinol. Uh, Robinol is cheap, it's generic, comes as a pill, can be turned into a liquid, and it dries up secretions. And uh, for many people, it was more than sufficient to dry up the perspiration in their hands and feet. The downside to Robinol, it is a derivative of a drug called atropine. And um, like atropine, it can blur your vision, it can make you dizzy, it 
biggest side effect or the number one reason people stop it is that it also dries up the mouth and gives you really severe dry mouth and it can be very uncomfortable and, and actually make it difficult to sleep or even speak. If that's an issue, the drug is not worth staying on. There are other options. Other options include medicines that control uh, blood pressure. So we use a group of medications called beta blockers, in particular one called Indorol or Propranolol in low doses. Now Indorol can also make you uh, dizzy, it can give you exercise intolerance, but in the doses we're using for hyperhidrosis, they're pretty low doses. So uh, pretty well tolerated. If that's not working or if there's side effects or you have concerns, another alternative is a drug called clonidine. And clonidine is an alpha-2 agonist, is the specific class of medication. It's also a blood pressure medication. Again, in the doses we use, it usually doesn't modify your blood pressure at all. Uh, it can cause dizziness, it can cause exercise intolerance, but in the doses we use, most people do fine. The biggest problem with the clonidine I've seen is simply that uh, the dose has too many peaks and valleys, and when you get the valleys, the sweating starts up. We can get around that by using a clonidine patch. But the side effect of a patch is that uh, you can be allergic to the tape or the glue that's in the patch. And that can be a bit of an issue for patients. Uh, if none of these things work, there is some work done with Botox. The problem with the Botox is the fact that it has to be repeated regularly. Uh, there's also issues with the fact that um, you have to use a lot of it. And you're injecting into the palms and the soles. It's a very painful place to give these injections. Patients tend to not like it. And there really are not a lot of people that are trained to do this. So, um, for this particular procedure, there's a lot of people that can give Botox, but to give it for hyperhidrosis, there's not a lot of people trained to hit those, those spots. And you have to hit them just right or they don't, it doesn't work. Uh, one of the most exciting treatments available is something called iontrophoresis. And with it, it's a method of getting medicines across the skin, and we've used it extensively for anesthetic agents, something called NUMBY stuff, N-U-M-B-Y stuff. It's been used in ERs for 15 years. It's even featured on an episode of uh, the TV show ER. And what they do is they place the medicine on the skin, they place some electrodes over it, pass a very low voltage current through the electrodes, and it drives the medicine through the skin. In the case of hyperhidrosis, we actually use a water bath and pass the electricity through the water bath and have the patient put their hands in the water bath. People have combined this with all of the different agents we've talked about, the Indorol, the uh, clonidine, and in particular the sodium glycopyrrolate, the rubinol. Um, and it works very well and, and actually works well without the medicine being added to the water bath as well. Just pure iontrophoresis with, with uh, deionized water tends to work. The number one problem with this treatment is it only lasts for roughly 12 hours and has to be repeated but it'll get you through your business day. Uh, repeated soaking of the hands and feet, especially in the desert where we live, results in um, cracked and dried skin, so you wind up having to put emollients over the skin. Um, but it's well tolerated. The other problem with it is that the water bath's about $200 and almost nobody's insurance covers it. However, if you're not able to hold a pencil and you're trying to go to school, that may be a real cheap investment for you. It's something to think about. The last two therapies I kind of want to lump in together, uh, there's definitely value in both of them, and that's uh, hypnosis and biofeedback. The autonomic nervous system that controls the fight or flight response is, without a doubt, under the control of your brain, but it's not under conscious control. And you can imagine how sitting in your office, sitting in your bedroom, relaxed and comfortable, you can work yourself up simply by imagining somebody who makes you angry or a time you were very frightened. You can make your 
pulse rate increase, your breathing speed up, and maybe even get your palms and soles to get a little bit sweaty. Or imagine a time you had to go on stage or do something very scary. The part about making your hands sweaty is the most important part. You can consciously make that happen. If you can consciously make it happen, you can consciously make it stop happening. More importantly, the autonomic nervous system is under exquisite control of the subconscious. Fright is not a conscious event. We don't choose to be scared when we go on stage and have to give a presentation. In fact, we'd rather not be scared. I have to go give that presentation for my job, otherwise I'd lose my job. I don't want to be scared. But your subconscious is saying, this is frightening. You could die up here. You need to be scared. And so you become scared. Well, your subconscious can just as likely shut that response down. Hypnosis and biofeedback are two ways of activating that same part of the subconscious and teaching you to bring what is in the subconscious under conscious control and shut down the sweating response to both the hands and the feet. Uh, it requires the help of somebody who's trained in both hypnosis and biofeedback, or, or hypnosis or biofeedback, depending on which modality you're working with. But it's definitely effective and works very well when combined with medication therapy and iontrophoresis. So what I want you to take home from this, or what you really, I'm hoping you take home from this, is that there are options for these patients. You don't need to suffer. And um, the patients I've treated have all suffered in silent for years. And they've known since the time they were little kids that their hands sweat more than others and when they would do marker drawings they would leave smudges all over them when they would try to hold crayons they'd melt in their hands and they never could hold a pencil ever uh, they tried deodorant or not deodorants but uh, antiperspirants which never worked they tried powders which quickly turned to mud or to glue uh, and then they resigned to live with it they're embarrassed as they get older to shake hands with people in business situations. They're embarrassed to hold hands with loved ones. Uh, it makes things like dating very difficult as the kids become teenagers. Um, but there are options open for them. You don't need to suffer in silence. And it's not suffer or have surgery. There's some not so drastic options open to you. So if we can be of, uh, of assistance here in our office, please give us a call. We're at area code 775-359-7111. Uh, we'd be happy to see you here for consultation, uh, even on a same-day basis. But unfortunately, we can't help you over the telephone or over the Internet. We'll see you next time.